Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining. Uh, my name is James Kimball. I'm a senior software engineer at Zebra Technologies. Uh, so today I will be going over our print DNA ecosystem integration and review. Um, so we can see here that inside our print DNA family, we have productivity tools, including pairing solutions, uh, Zebra Designer to design templates and uh, barcodes. Uh, we have some management tools like Printer Profile Manager Enterprise to help you manage your devices through the cloud, Printer Setup Utility to help get your new devices all set up and running quickly. Um, inside our development tools, you can see we have multi-platform SDKs to help users design their own applications. Uh, we also have browser print to help you quickly print from any browser on any device. Um, and then we have some visibility tools, including our visibility services and our MDM connectors. So for our specialized print integration tools, we're going to be looking at some of our web printing tools, including Cloud Connect and Browser Print. Um, we'll then move into the Android apps to show you the Browser Print in Android and Print Connect. Um, from there, we can move on to our enterprise solutions, which includes Network Connect to print from PLCs. And finally, I'll show you some of our new card integration tools, such as Card Studio 2.0 and our Smart Card Calibration tool. So looking into our Cloud Connect, our Cloud Connect gives our device the ability to directly connect to apps running in cloud environments. And it centralizes the apps that can run across multiple devices ensuring common user experiences no matter what device is being used. Um, we do have direct, secure, and encrypted connections there, uh, making it firewall friendly as well. Um, it is easy for your IT to control. Then within those web services provided through our Zebra SDK, it becomes very easy to discover your connected printers connect to them and interact with them on the cloud. Uh, so let's take a look at how that looks. Uh, so here we have a little code snippet. Um, we are discovering our printers, adding them to a list here. So the first thing we wanna do here is create our remote discover and get connected printers, which we can see on line 25. We're going to be sending in the port information of where those printers are. Um, once we find the list of connected printers, we'll go through them and add them as a slim disco printer to our list of printers. The slim disco printer contains a subset of settings for the discovery to help you make sure you're connecting to the right printer and you have the information for it. All right, once we have our printer, we're going to create a connection to that printer using the serial number. So we'll see here on line 26, we make a remote connection object and connect to it using the serial number and the same port that we used for discovery in the previous slide. Once we have all of that, we can then call connection.open and create our Zebra printer object uh, from our Zebra SDK. Printer object will give you more abilities to uh, work with your printer. You're able to play with graphics. Um, you're able to store and get templates off your printer. And you can see here at line 30, uh, you're also able to print configuration labels and other labels from your printer. Moving on into the browser print. Um, the browser print is an application that allows web pages to communicate with the Zebra printers directly through the client's device connection. Uh, it has the ability to auto discover USB and network connected Zebra printers. And it also allows you to set the default printer on your 
device. So that means if you're on a web page and you click to print, it will give you the option to print from your Zebra printer instead of printing it to your HP printer or a uh, normal printer that you'd have at your house. All right, so once set up, the user will only need to update their web application to modify anything they'd like. Um, the browser print in the background is more of a connection from your web application to your printer. So as long as you have all that set up, really all you need to do is edit your web page to do different things with your printer. Uh, the connectivity is always done in the background using browser print itself. Um, so let's see how that works. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the uh, hamburger up in the top left. This will bring down a drop down for you and start discovering all the devices around you. So we'll see here that we have a list of all the Bluetooth devices around me. Um, from there, you can find the device you'd like to click on in the list and select it. Uh, we'll see that on a successful attempt, all the information about the printer and is set in, sorry, all the information about the printer is shown on here. You can see the serial number, the model, things like that. And then you also have the ability to see what accepted domains and block domains you have for that printer. However, on a failure, you're going to see that none of the information gets loaded over here. So you don't have your model, your serial number, any of that. And if you go into the accepted and blocked domains, you will also not see any of the actual domains in the list there. All right, so managing the domains for browser print is very similar to the web page. Um, the pop-up will drop down from the top of the screen. You can see that on the left phone here. Uh, that pop-up will give you the uh, ability to either allow or block the domain. Clicking the block option will block it for that one request. However, refreshing the page will allow that pop-up to occur again, and then you can allow it if you'd like. Uh, clicking the allow option will add it to your domain and to your accepted domains inside of browser print. So looking at the image on the right, we can see that the CAG demo is listed in our accepted domains. However, if we do want to remove that one, we can do a long press on that domain in the list, and it'll bring up the pop-up we see on the right, allowing us to delete that domain from the list. All right, moving on to Print Connect. Print Connect makes it simple for developers to add a label and to add label and receipt printing to their Android solutions. Uh, we can connect to Zebra devices through either YLAN or Bluetooth connections. And using the intents makes it easier and quicker to implement into already existing solutions. So we can see in the code example to the right how simple it is to set up. First thing we want to do is create ourselves an intent. And then inside that intent, we'll set the components. Uh, we're going to set the component to com zebra.printconnect and we're going to create a pass through service with this intent. Uh, this will add a this will give us the ability to add uh, a way to pass data through to the printer and pass results back from the printer to your application. So we can see the next two lines after that little blue box. We're going to pass in our pass through data using the bytes. And then we're going to add a result result receiver in order to get the results back to know how to handle the different outcomes. Inside the result receiver, you can see there we can handle either a success if the result code is zero or a failure of the print job. Depending on what happened there, you can let the user know. All right, so moving on into our uh, enterprise solutions, 
Uh, we can see here we have Zebra Network Connect. It is a seamless way to connect rugged Zebra scanners and printers to the most widely used industrial Ethernet protocols and other standard networks without additional conversion hardware. What does that exactly mean? Let's take a closer look. Okay, so looking at how it was set up before using Zebra Network Connect would be the uh, top few images. Uh, you first needed to handwrite any ZPL for the printers. Once you have your ZPL created, you can then you will then need to purchase a configure converter box or write some kind of custom open socket code. Send your ZPL into the ladder logic. From there, uh, you can write your ladder logic as you normally would. However, if anything changes in your ZPL or your templates, you're going to have to start this process all over again from step one in writing the ZPL, converting it, and then putting that into your ladder logic. So now, looking at how it works with Network Connect, uh, you're able to use our design, uh, design templates and our design applications to create any labels that you'd like to use. You can send these labels and store them on your printer. Once you have those stored on your printer, you can then continue to write your ladder logic as you normally would have. Um, after that, you're ready to print. If anything changes inside your templates or your ZPL and you want to add new labels, you can simply send those down and update the ones on your printer or send new ones to your printer. Add a little bit of code in your ladder logic to access those. And again, you're ready to continue printing. All right, so in conclusion, our Network Connect is a solution that doesn't just save you time and energy, but also money. From allowing the quick updates to the templates and labels to completely removing almost a $1,000 purchase per setup, you're gaining the ability to manage your printer fleet easily and design labels through a GUI instead of a ZPL text document. Let's move into our new card uh, solutions. So one that came out in the last couple of years is Card Studio 2.0. Um, you can see here that it came out with three different editions, standard, enterprise, and professional. Um, this diagram shows you a list of the different options and what they come with, what they don't come with. Um, so really what you need to look at and decide to help you decide what edition you'd like to use is the database connectivity and the smart card. The database connectivity is going to allow you to connect to things like your employee database or other databases to quickly print ID badges and other cards from your database info. And the smart card encoding is now going to allow you to code MyFair and DeskFire cards and other smart cards as well that we're in. Card Studio 1.0. All right, so Card Studio itself comes with three separate applications. First one we're going to look at is our Design Studio. You can see where the user can quickly create templates for use with their database information to easily create badges and other cards. Once you have those templates created, you move on to the Print Studio interface. You can see where this is where you're able to link your database information and quickly see the information and how it translates into the template you created earlier. Um, here, you're also able to edit any of that database information in the lower left hand side of the application. And then you can see in the top right where all that information goes into your template to see the preview. And then we also have a third application here, which is our smart card editor. Has been improved to 
in code, or it has been improved coding support for the MyFair and Desfire cards and does still support all of the previous smart card encodings that were in Card Studio 1.0. The one last addition that we do have to Card Studio 2.0 is back in the Design Studio, the first application I showed you, uh, we have added the addition of our store. Inside the store, you can find multiple different templates and designs that you can download and edit to fit your company best. Uh, these include educational cards, healthcare badges, event cards, anything that we thought um, people had either requested or asked for in the past. We have now added some template cards here. Um, these are also all editable. So once you purchase them and download them, you'll be able to edit them to fit your company best, whether you'd like to change the background or move the picture around. Maybe you don't want both first name and last name on both sides of the card. You're able to add, remove anything you'd like on there. Okay. So moving on to our next application for card, our card printers. Uh, we've added a smart card calibration and test utility. Uh, this app has been designed to quickly identify and help troubleshoot any calibration issue in your printer. First, you'll need to connect your printer. We can see that I have connected to mine. Uh, so once I've connected to mine over USB, uh, you'll see all the information in the left side of the application will pop populate including your serial number, what kind of readers you have installed, and your card driver version. Um, from there, we can begin verifying our ATR. And after that has been verified, we'll be able to start running our tests. You can calibrate and set printer card offset location through here. And any information in that communication log at the bottom will tell you about what offset values you're using and if anything is wrong during the testing. So here we can see that I set my offset value to zero and that there's no ATR there to test. So everything there has finished. All right, moving on, we've also added our web server feature that has been in our LinkOS printers for years to our card printers. Uh, this will give you some generic printer information on the homepage. You're able to edit and your connectivity and printer settings and also run tests, update firmware, do some test prints, things like that. So we can see here that on the different pages here, you have your connectivity settings. So you can change a few of these in here. Um, those will be editable. The uh, DHCP and the SNMP, you're able to move those, turn them on and off. Um, you also have your firmware here. You can see the current version that you have installed and whether or not you'd like to update that. And finally, here we have some of our sensors that are installed in the printer, including our uh, whether there's any card present, uh, things like that. We're now going to open up to the live Q&A session to answer any questions you might have. To join us, please scroll down and click the Join Q&A button next to the session in the agenda. Thank you, everyone.